Hi everyone, this is Dan Fogel. I want to give you a lesson on how I use Photoshop to create references for the Metamorphosis project in Drawing 2. I'm going to start by clicking open Photoshop here. And then I'll select uh, Create New. <clears throat> From that point, I think it's good practice as a drawing artist or a painting artist to start to design your files to fit in the rectangle for your paper or your canvas, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to change this to inches <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to set my width to 12 and my height to 9. So that's a 3 by 4 proportion. And I think I'll turn this up to 150. Uh, that uh, it's, a, it's exactly half of your drawing paper, so everything uh, fits just exactly the same um, as it would on your large piece of paper. And I'll just say, go ahead and create. Okay, so from there I have a blank Photoshop file, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off this background layer for now. So I'll unlock the background layer and then I can turn that off. The next thing I want to do, I have some files prepared that I want to turn into a metamorphic type image. That is, it's a kind of in image where there's a juxtaposition, a rearrangement, maybe you're playing around uh, with portions and scale uh, and doing some unexpected things uh, that you couldn't see exactly um, in the natural world and that's one of those things that uh, artists have had to do for a long time is recreate things um, or make stuff up and so this is one one way that uh, contemporary artists are going about doing those kinds of things so I have some files here I'm just going to start to drag those into my Photoshop file and you'll see there's an X here and I just have to press return to accept that And uh, then I'll do the same for the rest of the files that I want to import. Press return. Press return again. going to arrange my workspace. Sometimes things come out of order and I like the Essentials palette. Um, and I'm going to move this over. There we go. Trying to get everything so I can see it nicely on screen and you can see it in my recorder. Also hide that and get a little bit more space here on the screen too. Okay, so uh, these images are too large right now, so I'm going to start to resize them. I don't think I'll need this background, so I'm just going to throw that away. And uh, what I want to do is start to build my file. I'm going to turn all those off by clicking on the eyeball icon there. Let's turn this one back on. And I'm going to use the transform feature. This command T. I'm going to start to reposition and resize this somewhere down here in the lower part of my image because I want to have a little bit of background. Now I need to let that proportion relax so I'm going to press the shift key so that that all relaxes and then I can move these proportions around to get the image that I'm looking for. So 
This is a bird's wing that um, is a kind of a schematic, um, and I liked it because it has a lot of nice details here uh, that I can use to get accurate looking uh, bird's wing when I draw it in charcoal. So uh, this strategy uh, is my old strategy. I'm going to use this polygon lasso tool here. It's the one, if I right click on this uh, toolbar here, polygon comes out. It's not this one, but I like this polygon lasso because it lets me make lots of small decisions about outlines. So right now what I'm doing is an essential skill for drawing and painting artists who want to use the computer a little bit is just learning how to select parts of images that are loaded into Photoshop. So if I click around that, every time I click, I, my cursor changes direction. I can cut a pathway around that. And then if I use the copy and paste, so I'll just I use my keyboard here, Command C, and then Command V. Make sure you're on the right layer. So I cut a path around the bird's wing, and then I'm going to use Command C, and then Command V. And uh, when I do that, what happens is I get my bird's wing over here on a new layer. So this is becoming more isolated. <clears throat> I can then use the Transform tool, which is just Command T for Transform, and I get these tabs. So the way Photoshop is set up these days is it's maintaining that proportion of that, um, which is fine for now. I'm just trying to move things around and size it uh, so it fits better. Now what you got to remember here is that I'm designing this rectangle is going to actually become a full-size piece of paper. So that bird's wing might not need to be that big. Yeah, I've got to think about what that's going to look like in my finished piece. And when you're transforming something, if you like it, you just press return, and then it will accept that. So there's the original, and there's my transformation. I don't need this original layer anymore, um, but I just have it saved there, and I've turned the visibility off just so I have a backup or some redundancy for, for that in case I need it. This is a little piece of a moped or a motorcycle uh, that, that I've already uh, gone through this process and uh, used this tool, uh, the uh, polygon lasso, to cut out a piece of a motorcycle. I'm going to just use my transform uh, function, command T again, to shrink that down getting that uh, a little bit uh, more sized to and placed to where I think I want that to be in my composition. Press return uh, when I like it. Now remember, you know, I can always come back and reselect on those layers and keep transforming them, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing as I try to nudge these parts into place uh, for a more, more cohesive look. Uh, the other thing to remember here, guys, is I'm, I'm not uh, designing this image to be delivered digitally. Um, in fact, I like it when there's a little bit of some uh, loose edges, some rough edges. Now, my Photoshop skills, to be honest, are a bit outdated and primitive compared to comparatively. Uh, but I actually like to have a little bit of uh, this record here. I think it helps me piece things together, honestly, as a drawing artist. Um, a little better, but some people's Photoshop skills these days are just amazing. Um, so my point is that you don't want to spend too much time uh, building these files. You should be spending the most amount of time uh, drawing them in charcoal or pencil or some other art materials, uh, but um, you you want to use your your current level of skills uh, to the best of your ability for, for making these pieces. But remember, you're not delivering uh, computer art here. You're actually trying to set something up to deliver in a more traditional media. Okay, uh, well anyway, so there's my uh, motorcycle. Let's turn on uh, some of these other layers. And I didn't need to cut out any pieces of that motorcycle, so that process was uh, slightly different. Okay, here's a pineapple. Well, so 
if I have a, something that is not layered correctly, what I can do is come over here to my layers palette and I'll just pull that pineapple up higher in the stack so that it comes on top of this background. And then the other thing I can do is move that background of that street scene down all the way to the bottom so that that becomes kind of the background. I have something here that's called background copy and that's from uh, an old record or old file. So what I can do is I can rename that, <clears throat> and that's a picture of a raccoon. So I'm just going to name that raccoon right now. And if you wanted to, you could go through and you could uh, name these other layers. It might help you, but it might also take more time than, and become more cumbersome than is needed. Um, so that's up to you, but it is an option to edit uh, layer names here in Photoshop as well. Okay, here's my uh, pineapple. Well, I want to turn off some of these other layers while I'm working on this pineapple. Now, this is a, a really amazing feature um, from the new, some of the newest uh, versions of Photoshop is uh, this tool right here. It's called the Object Selection Tool. And all that I have to do is lasso around uh, my subject. And all of a sudden, it basically clips this thing out for me, more or less just perfect. So let's go ahead and try it. Got my object selection tool here, and then I'm going to click, hold, and drag uh, around my pineapple and uh, drop that selection off where I want it to be and give it a second to work. There we go. Okay, so we grabbed uh, that pineapple. Now, I think uh, for drawing artists, it's better if that selection is actually a little bit loose. So I don't want to be in so tight. I'm going to, I'm going to expand this uh, selected area by coming up to Select. <clears throat> and I will come to Modify, and then I will say Expand. And I can choose, I'll just say pick a safe number. Maybe uh, ten, 5 or 10 pixels is probably good. Uh, how, about, how about 5? Let's see what 5 does. OK. That's comfortable. Actually, probably would prefer a little bit more. So I'm going to undo that, and then I'm going to re-go through those steps and say uh, select, modify, expand, and instead of selecting five pixels, I'm going to go with ten. Uh, I like to have just a little bit more leeway around that. <clears throat> So there's a variety of ways I can get rid of the white. You saw me do this before with I copied and pasted the wing off of the white background and it set the selection onto a new layer. Here's another option for getting rid of that white space. Okay, after you have your object selected, you could copy and paste it onto a new layer. <clears throat> or here's another option uh, for manipulating things in Photoshop. So I'll come over, because of how I imported it, it's now on a smart layer. So what I want to do is I'm just going to convert this to a regular layer. I'll just say, yeah, don't show that again, and just say, yeah. And then what I want to do here now is come up to Select. This is also a very useful tool. Come up to Select and press Select Inverse. And so what that's going to do is it's going to select the pixels outside of my selection. Now I can press the Delete key. And the background uh, will just go away because what's happening is all this stuff out here is what's being selected now. And the pineapple is being saved. So if I want to get rid of this uh, moving selection, it's a common thing that beginners have to overcome. What is this thing? These, this is called the marching ants sometimes or the marquee. Um, you can see it. It's just this. It's the selection uh, indicator. And the way to get rid of that is you have to deselect. You can come up here to the menu and deselect, but my recommendation is you learn this right away, is Command D. And if you need to manipulate something or get off this layer, you can click on other parts or you can press Command D. So Command D is a good tool to remember. So here's this pineapple. Now I'm going to transform this again and uh, start to uh, build this into a kind of flying um, motorcycle thing. So 
Just starting to arrange my parts. <clears throat> Finally, I have an animal, a raccoon, that I want to include as uh, part of the subject matter as well. I like uh, drawings of animals. I think they're always intriguing. Good subject matter always gets people's attention when you include animals in your artwork. So strongly advised maybe uh, using some kind of am animal imagery in uh, this piece and also in uh, the next piece, the multiple image too. So again, I want to use this uh, object selection tool and it doesn't just work on uh, white images it works on even more complicated images like this raccoon so i just go ahead and select around that whoops i'm on the wrong layer so uh, what i learned a long time ago in uh, my early days as uh, learning about photoshop is if something doesn't work it's always your fault um, it's never the fault of the computer so just to attribute that to operator, so what happened is I had the pineapple layer selected instead of the raccoon. So the object tool is grabbing the layer here uh, that is indicated as being in focus for the, for the operation. So let's try that again. I'm going to lasso around, click, hold, and drag around that raccoon, and then I'll let go. Boom. I found that pretty quick. And I want to do the same thing here. I want to come up to select and I want to modify that selection. I'm going to expand on that 10 pixels at least. I think I need to go again um, because there's a lot of little fine details on this subject matter that I don't want to lose. Um, it's so much better to have, a, I think, have a little bit of gap around your stuff as a drawing artist. Don't try to make a seamless digital image. It's better to know where the edges of your parts are because then it can help you uh, stitch those things together um, in with your traditional materials. So I wanted to grow that selection. It's not technically growing it. It's expanding it. And I, I'm just doing it in increments. I started with 10 and then I did another 10. And I could even do maybe it's better to be safe now so I have a little extra now. I can always take take that off later. Um, it's much harder to bring back extra pixels that you lost. One more. I'm going to do one more expand here. There we go. That looks great. I'm going to copy this guy now. Command C, and then Command V, and then it winds up on a new layer. And then I'll just turn that one off. And uh, we're back here to this scene. Turn that raccoon off for just a second here, and I want to play around with this background. It's a little too large. Now, this is just a screenshot uh, from uh, uh, Google Google Earth, um, and it's just a local scene, an Arizona scene, um, something you could see in any of the neighborhoods around around Phoenix or Tempe or Mesa. Um, and so what I want to do is continue to transform this snippet of uh, Google Street View and I'll allow a little bit of stuff like that. I mean, in this case, I think it's more legitimate to borrow sources and photos from almost anywhere you want to, really, uh, be, especially if you're going to be bending and squishing and transforming uh, these things significantly. So I just, sometimes you have to hold the shift key when you transform, other times you uh, you don't, depending on which operation you're trying to do, if you're trying to skew it or if you're trying to maintain proportion. Uh, that's all uh, up to you. A little bit of a some perspective distortions here, probably because, you know, the street view photos are taken while they're moving. Um, okay, getting closer to what that is supposed to be. It's just supposed to be kind of a generic landscape that occupies uh, the bottom of the frame and creates a, a sense of space against the main character that's going to be this raccoon uh, flying a pineapple.
All right, so I want to just drag the sky color up and um, expand this field above the, the background here. So there's probably multiple ways to do this, but here's what I'm going to do. Uh, first thing is I want to um, convert this just to a layer, uh, just because that, that's more what I'm used to. So I need to, I'm going to use what my marquee tool here, and I want to grab a normal marquee. That means a marquee that's flexible in its dimensions. I'm just going to select a little strip of blue at the top of the frame. That's the biggest piece of blue I can find that doesn't have any other colors in it. And I'm going to uh, copy that. Command C and Command V. And now it's hard to see what happened, but there's really just like a little skinny strip of blue right there. I'm going to use the transform tool. To stretch this little piece of blue all the way up to the top of the drawing or the file. So I have to hold the shift key and I'm just going to pull it open. And look, there's a background looking good. I'll press return. It might be a little bit uh, nicer look. I'll put the uh, landscape, the original, in front of that blue field. So that uh, the stuff with the more details and um, more data in it is, is more visible. Okay, well there's my raccoon. I want to start to I, uh, transform this character, this figure now. Use the command T and just start to click, hold, and drag and move that guy around. Now, <clears throat> what's going to happen with this raccoon is I'm going to be cutting it apart, moving it a lot. So it's just good practice as digital artists to make a copy of this thing. So what I'm going to do is grab the raccoon, drag it down to the plus, line, plus sign. What that does is duplicating this layer. Now I have a backup of uh, my raccoon. So if I mess up what I'm about to do to it, it's not a big deal. So it's an easy way to kind of cover your tracks. Um, when you're working with uh, digital files is you can just make a copy of the layer and then turn off the visibility so that the things that the new layer is something that you are going to work on so look there's there's the pineapple it's kind of moving in got the raccoon kind of sizing in space okay so if I want the raccoon to come in front of the pineapple I've got to drag it up higher onto the top of the pile of layers there's the control uh, unit, the handlebars. There's the wing. So I'm going to have to make some decisions here, you know, about what's in front of the, the wing or the raccoon. And I can pull those layers around, but I can also start to selectively erase and put put some things in front of the wing other things behind um, etc so what i'm going to start to do now is erasing and uh, pulling some layers forward other layers back uh, to create my my morph this is the morph here okay this contraption uh, with this um, anamorphic or sorry anthropomorphic uh, raccoon um, and it's going to be riding this sort of mechanistic pineapple. Um, and it's all kind of set in a local area around Mesa or Tempe somewhere. Uh, just, just for humor. But I think art should somehow also uh, reflect life too. Well, it's all pretty organic from here. You can basically already see the, the rough components of of uh, this file and now it's just a sort of artistic uh, meddling so to speak 
Uh, but what I want to show you next is another aspect of transformation. So I'm going to select on this pineapple here, select layer, press command T, the pineapple will select. And I'm going to make it smaller. <clears throat> and then I'm going to press return. And then I'm going to transform it again. And this time I'm going to come up to this tool here. It's called the bicubic transformation. I'm just going to leave it set at bicubic. There's other possibilities there, but I just think the bicubic works best. And this is amazing. Uh, what this does is it uh, lets me push this pineapple around and morph it essentially into a bent pineapple. If I want to bend a pineapple or I want to bend a um, anything really, you know, I, it's a great way to use some digital tools. Um, to help you create metamorphic type effects. So this is going to become like the body of the craft or the ship that the raccoon is driving. Um, so one thing I think about transformation here is it's, it's usually better not to try to transform too much too far, but rather to do the transformation in increments. So don't go to try to go too far too fast. Maybe do five or ten uh, transformations and then press return to accept that transformation. I'm going to move that pineapple up and over. So do your transformations in small steps. Hone in on your solutions to getting the parts to fit together uh, to being what the right size and shape. Don't try to get everything done all in one transformation step. The computer handles the information better and I think you know the artist, the decision maker also handles the information better. You just transform it in smaller pieces and, and press return as you go. You can always press undo. I didn't make a backup layer of this uh, of the pineapple, uh, but it's easy for me to re-import that. So, um, you know, but you can also make multiple layers for redundancy here. All right, so here's uh, this control unit here. I want to remove the tire and link up some of the steering uh, stuff into the greenery of the pineapple. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see some of these details. And the way I did that was Command Plus. You press Command Plus or Command Minus, your view will zoom in. Well, a lot of ways that you could go about removing pieces here. <clears throat> um, but I think what I'm going to do, I always pick stuff for me that's intuitive and that seems the most like traditional materials, like using a pair of scissors. Um, and glue to cut up photographs. So I just doubled up that layer so I have some redundancy. Now here's a new tool. I'm going to come over and I'm going to use the eraser tool. You click on that. And make sure you're on the right layer. It's not going to let me erase into uh, the smart layers. So I have to convert this to a layer and now I should be able to go in and just start to erase parts of this uh, motorcycle tire. So that's one way to get rid of unwanted pixels. I can control the, the size and shape of uh, the brush up here or the eraser up here. I can make that a little bit bigger. I can make it more hard-edged. So it's bigger, it's more hard-edged. Um, if I don't like what I've erased, I can undo it with Command-Z. Um, another option that I think maybe is a, actually a little better 
is just to use this uh, rectangular, uh, sorry, the polygon lasso. Polygon lasso, and just click around the pieces that you want to delete. So I'm cutting a little pathway around it as opposed to just going at it freehand. Um, two basically different ways to do basically the same thing. Sorry, that's complicated to see with the pineapple back there. So let me turn off the pineapple. <clears throat> and you can see what I did is I clicked around some of the stuff here on the tire that I want to delete. And then I'll just press delete. And that, that goes away. Bringing that pineapple back. What I'm doing here is if I just, I'm going to deselect that. If I uh, hold the command key and click on the layer that I want to move, the Photoshop is getting smarter these days. It's just going to move uh, the layer that you click on, which is a great feature. Uh, makes it so much easier than it used to be in the olden days, for sure. So um, again, I got to think about this. What's it going to look like on a big 18 by 24 inch page? Um, and I probably need to reconsider some of the street scene at the bottom, uh, but it's just what I have imported and prepared right now. So I need to just continue uh, to to work with that as well. Just nudging all these parts around till they are going to fit in this rectangle, and this is the rectangle that I want. Because this is my paper, so what we're learning here is composition. You are um, figuring out, you know, how to how to make things the right size and shape and place. So I, you know, at this point, what I'm doing, I just use a, that transform tool a lot, adjust the size and shape of the parts of the image so that it starts to become more and more cohesive. Uh, you can use the transform, you can use the eraser. Okay, well, I really like how this is looking and I like these distortions I made on the pineapple. I think I'm going to continue to uh, size this it still seems probably a little too big um, uh, for the composition uh, but I, I'm just going to leave it alone uh, for the time being um, and I want to draw your attention over here to the, the raccoon uh, because there's some things that I want to start to do to this to make it fit on uh, the this main subject here this pineapple uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'll just drag this down um, slightly. And this handlebar, I haven't decided exactly, you know, where that ought to go, but probably about right there. And that can get, uh, this can get uh, transformed as well. <clears throat> if needed to help fit all the pieces together. But right now the, the raccoon is definitely going to be the uh, focal point of the image. And so you want to make sure that that, that looks uh, convincingly uh, posed. Well, I definitely chose this guy because I could see his arms and legs um, and his tail and his face. And it was basically, you know, in the right, right spot for driving uh, a, a, a motorcycle, but not quite. So how do I handle that? Well, I'm going to use the transform tool. Um, and the other strategy I have here is clipping it apart and uh, using the pieces uh, individually as well. So the other thing is that you that that I do is I just remember that I'm not trying to draw a, make a seamless digital file trying to make something that I can draw a picture on, uh, from. So it's it's totally different because the artist, when they're drawing with a pencil or charcoal or 
pen or something like that can fill in those gaps you know it's like if there's a glitch in in your pixels um, it's not a big deal for the drawing artist you can just cover those gaps so here I'm working on uh, this this raccoon I need to get on the right layer Let's get on the right layer so here's the raccoon and what I'm going to do is start by cutting out parts of the raccoon's anatomy so you know I'm taking that arm off there's a shoulder there legs you know down to the feet so I want to get kind of like a limb uh, that has more or less all the complete uh, parts on it I'm just I'm not going to hurt the raccoon I'm just going to copy and paste that section down and what what that does is it it separates it gives me you know a new piece to play around with I come over here and you know put this guy's arm on the motorcycle and then I can transform it and change the size and shape any way I want to really I mean it, it takes a lot of it a little bit of experimentation uh, but I think it's very intuitive honestly um, and I try to make my digital uh, practice my digital use as in intuitive as possible and to link the things that I'm doing on the computer Command C and then Command V. Try to link the things that I'm doing on the computer to traditional kinds of art making activities like actually cutting out a photograph or pasting uh, parts of a photograph. Continue to use the transform tool. I'm running out of room here so it's not a problem you know when you work digitally you can always just keep uh, shrinking and and moving things around um, and I what I can also do you know is just turn off the background if that's distracting uh, while I build so I'll just move all this down give myself a little more room to make my constructions not a big deal it's awesome you know um, it's so much easier than doing this in your sketchbook with, um, you know, a lot uh, real real materials. It that takes so much more time, you know. And it's the benefit of being able to lay things out digitally is you can move these things around, resize them without without a lot of grief. Sure, you have to learn some of the interface, or you have to maybe get some help. Um, but um, the, these tools are there for all students now um, simply by using computers that are available at school. Copy and paste the head. So I'm just kind of getting all the body parts together that I think I might want to manipulate um, on Command C. Oops. Got to be on the right layer. Command C. Command V. Paste it, and then you can grab that new piece and move it around. And start to reassemble this guy over here. It's a little too big, maybe. I want to move the size of the handlebars a little smaller. You just press Command T, click on that thing, press Command T, uh, click, hold, and drag, put the size of the pieces the way you want them. 
You can click, hold, and drag and also move them around. And click on the head and, you know, I want to turn that so it looks like his line of sight is more, you know, alert and humanistic, I guess. And I could maybe make his, his head a little bit bigger just for more, you know, comic effect, more graphic, a quicker graphic read. All these things are going to be almost imperceptible to your viewers um, when, when they look at your art um, as a drawing. You know, subtle things uh, like that. That, you know, just, it takes a creative mind about, um, you know, artists have always taken the raw materials and said, hey, you know, how, how can I uh, repurpose that? How can I beautify that? Um, what What's missing? Um, what can I fill in the blanks to make connections here? Um, Etc. So I think what I need to do here is copy the body again. And it's, you know, that's the thing I guess that's hard to teach about this is it's, it's very um, organic. Things can get kind of confusing when you have all these layers. Um, all I can say is it takes practice and it's worth it also. Um, and you can get some help. These days there's a lot of people that know how to use Photoshop. So, you know, one trick with digital art is you, you can have multiple things here redundancies of the same picture getting layered together creatively. So now I already have legs, so maybe what I need to do um, to is, you know, get a, get a torso. I'm just going to use my eraser to help this guy fit a little better in between. And I'll use transform again to just scale and rotate and skew. I can make him longer and skinnier. Make him fit better. Just I'm holding down the command key sometimes, other times not. Sometimes I'm holding the shift key. They all do slightly different things. Um, or you, you can uh, try one solution and then you can, you know, turn, turn on your redundant copy and uh, try, try something else. You know, maybe I don't like how that, that looks. I, I don't expect to have success on a complicated uh, task like this uh, right away. It, it's better if I have a little more of an open mindset about how uh, things can be put together. Try a little different strategy here. Just using copy and paste and transform. Those are some of my main tools. It's kind of a common thing in drawing, you know, when you're putting together a large, complicated image, you might have to make eyes, hands, uh, faces uh, slightly larger. If you draw too small on those critical features, it just look, it's not, it's not going to look right. So <clears throat> you got to make sure that you have enough room to draw the small parts that are important like the faces and the hands and the feet. I can use an eraser here just to clean up some of these rough edges. I'm sure the Photoshop teachers will laugh, um, but this is kind of how I've been piecing these things together for uh, uh, several years now. Um, I like it because I think, you know, it's repeatable. I can explain it to a variety of level of students. And it's also, I think, 
um, for digital art, it's it's fairly intuitive. Um, it's a lot like uh, traditional materials, and it lets you get to um, do these kinds of complicated things uh, very quickly compared to what uh, used to be the the answers or the way that you had to do it, which would be to use your sketchbook and to make lots of um, different, you know, versions and have to go through very labor-intensive and a grueling process to arrive at these kinds of solutions. All right. So there's the basics of the transformation. Um, it definitely took a while, and I I will continue to refine this, but for the purposes of uh, the video, I'd say we're, we're getting very close. Another thing it, you can do, it's a little bit of a shortcut, I can just uh, select around there and press the trans... Oops, if I'm on the correct layer, that is and press transform and I can actually just modify the part right there on the animal. Sometimes that's a little easier actually uh, but it's a little harder to undo um, I think and uh, to make changes if you need to go back. But that's another option. It's a little more of a destructive um, approach but it, it gets the job done too. I want to make this graphic detail of the raccoon's tail bigger. So I need to resize these parts again so that they're going to fit into my composition. But one thing I can do now is I can resize them as 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 a group. So I'm going to hold the command key and click on all of the visible pieces here, the parts of the raccoon and the pineapple that are visible. I want to grab them all so that they're together. And I can press the link button here, the link layers. And now I'll be able to transform that whole thing as a unit. I'm going to turn back on the background and there was one more piece here. I had a wing that I was working on. Just play around with that. Some layer order issues up here that I can sort out um, and maybe uh, need to bring uh, some parts of the raccoon in front of this wing layer, other parts behind it. So when I draw it, I can do this when I draw, or I can do this digitally. I'm going to play around with what, what comes in front of the wing, that you know, and where this tail should be um, in relation to the wing. Probably what I want to do here is um, start to uh, move the tail for a little more kind of uh, whimsical, and comical kind of um, effect. So I'm going to click on the raccoon and I'll just cut the pixels out for the tail and transform them. Whoop, copy and paste it and then I can transform it a little more safely. I'll just use my eraser to get rid of the old, the old tail. Again, there's, there's probably much better ways to do this than uh, what I'm doing, but my Photoshop uh, training is um, several years old, and I also just uh, kind of do what I think is intuitive and what I think um, is easiest to teach uh, people who don't have a lot of computer art experience. Transform the body of the raccoon just a little bit more. Still trying to get that all to fit together. Of 
All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video of the flying raccoon uh, over Mesa. And uh, maybe you'll try something like that for yourself. Uh, and, you know, what I would use here, you, hopefully you see now using our class concepts and techniques, you know, you can see this thing on the screen. You have a lot of options for how you can go about uh, drawing that onto a large piece of paper and uh, get a very accurate drawing um, if you wanted to. Uh, you could also uh, draw, uh, once you can see this here set up like that, you can also just draw these kinds of things uh, freehanded as well and uh, with uh, good results too. So we could, we could use grids, we could use a projector, uh, you could use copy paper and a full-size print, or you could even start to maybe draw these kinds of things uh, free-handed. But um, that's the idea here, is I use this, some of these uh, new technologies to help me um, execute a kind of old um, idea, which is taking a lot of different parts and creating something new, fitting them into a composition, um, and then also uh, creating something that um, doesn't really uh, be very hard to observe in the real world at the same time. All right, everyone, that is my version of metamorphosis. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Don't be afraid to go ahead and dive in and use Photoshop and uh, give it a try.